everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Today, I'm going to be working with my quail. Uh, I'm actually going to be moving the quail today, and this is something that I never really thought I would do because I really like the setup that I have for them in the new workshop building that I have. But this is a decision that's kind of out of my hands at the moment, uh, and I want to talk to you a little bit about why that is. Uh, many of you know that back in June, Sarah and I both had COVID. Uh, it wasn't bad. Uh, in fact, for the first few days, we didn't even know we had it. Um, it was, I believe, probably the Omicron variant. Uh, nothing, it, it wasn't severe at all. But since that time, I've developed uh, kind of lingering symptoms that have gone on and on. Now, I'll go back in time and tell you that as a, as a kid and even as a, a young adult, I had asthma. Uh, and a lot of times that would be aggravated by allergies. But it's been probably 20 years since I've had any asthma that has been from allergies. Well, ever since we had COVID, uh, that has come back. And in fact, a couple weeks ago, or maybe three or four weeks ago now, it got so bad that I finally had to break down and go to the doctor. And they had to give me a steroid injection and start me on a prescription medication. That's something that I don't like to do. Uh, but it was to the point where I was having to use a nebulizer every four hours uh, because the asthma was getting so bad. Now, since that time, I've been taking a lot of steps to not only control the allergies because it really seems to me like allergies are what is triggering it. I'm not sure why since the COVID it has gotten worse, uh, but it definitely has. And so it's something I need to deal with. Hopefully over time, it will go back to normal uh, and I won't need to be on medication forever. But for now... That's just the way things are. Now, one thing that I've noticed that's really been setting it off um, is my quail. In the summer, because it's been so hot outside, I need to run fans in the workshop building to keep the quail cool. Uh, because of that, there's a ton of dander and dust that just flies around everywhere. And even though when I work in there, I try to keep the doors open and everything else, uh, I've noticed that for sure after I work in the, in the workshop with the by the quail or just working on other things, that that has definitely made my asthma pretty bad. So what I've decided to do is to move my two big grow out cages outside into the rabbit area. I'll still have my breeding quail in, in the workshop, but I don't think that just those three cages worth will cause much of a problem. So I've got some things to do with the second grow out cage before I can move it out to the, to the barn here. Uh, I've already fixed the first one, and I want to bring you guys along as I make some improvements or some changes to the second cage. So let's go in the barn. I want to show you what I've already done to the first cage, uh, and then we'll go up to the barn. We'll grab the quail that are going to live in this cage, bring them out here. Then we're going to bring the cage out and actually pressure wash it. Uh, this is something I like to do twice a year with all of our cages is bring them outside, pressure wash it. We'll pressure wash it, let it dry overnight, and then first thing tomorrow morning we'll get started on making some changes to that cage as well. So let's go look in the barn first so I can show you what I've done to this cage and what we're going to be doing to that second cage. So here is my first grow out cage that I moved out here. Uh, this cage is uh, eight feet long and about two feet deep. Uh, this cage, uh, you guys actually, I did a video when I built this cage, so you guys watched me build this cage. But I have done some things to it since that time, well, specifically for moving it out here, that I wanted to show you. The first thing is that I added a solid back. Uh, this is for two reasons. One, it's to help protect the barn behind it. But I also did that because over winter, what I plan on doing is completely enclosing one half of this cage to get the quail out of the wind. Uh, I figured I might as well do that backside now. Uh, not only does it protect the barn, uh, but it will, you know, make it easier to, when I decide to do the rest. I won't need to move the cage out to do that. So that's the first thing is I put a solid back on. I've attached the cage to the uh, barn so that it's good and sturdy. And then the second thing is I've built pans for these cages. Uh, in the barn, I had linoleum down on the floor and I just allowed the droppings from the quail to end up on the floor. I didn't really want that out here because I, this is a dirt floor out here and I don't want over time to basically be digging a hole in the floor. So I decided to go to pans. Now, because this cage, you know, is a custom size, I didn't find any pans that were this size. So I've decided to just make my own. And that's uh, one of the things we're gonna be doing tomorrow. 
But I wanted to show you these pans. So the pans are uh, two feet by about four feet. And you can see them here. And what this is, is made out of wood, but then I used a truck bed spray, liner spray, which kind of makes this almost like plasticky. And I sprayed this whole thing with that. Um, and I think that's gonna make a really nice pan. It gives it kind of a plastic feel. It should protect it from the poop and everything else that's gonna land on here. Now we will put shavings in here as well. So I really think that this is gonna work out well. You can see that I've already got food and water out here for the quail. Now the quail that we're gonna be moving into this cage today right now are living in the other grower cage. And it's just some ones that I'm raising up right now for meat. It's a, a group of all males. So they'll be the first ones to be moving out here. Uh, let's finish getting this cage ready by putting some wood chips in here and then we'll go grab those quail, bring them out here so we can move on with fixing the second cage. Now one thing that I did also on this is I put a little string here so that I can hook this up top. I will hold the cage while I put shavings in or while I clean it. These did turn out pretty heavy. So instead of dumping it, what I plan on doing is hooking it like this. And then I'll be able to use like a dust pan to scoop out the bedding when I need to do that. We're gonna have to count these as we put them in because I'm not even sure how many are here, to be honest. All right, it looks like 11 is how many we're gonna be moving to the uh, cage outside. Then we'll come back, we'll get this cage, and we'll start cleaning it up. I think they're gonna like it out here. It's actually quite a bit cooler out under this lean-to than it is in the workshop. All right, they have everything they need out here. Let's go get that other cage and start cleaning it up so we can start fixing it and get that moved out here as well. It's the next morning, we're back in the workshop. It's time to get started on this second cage. I brought the cage in overnight so that it could dry, uh, finish drying from washing it. It looks like it turned out really well as far as how it cleaned up. So I'm glad about that. It's good to do that to the cages a couple times a year just to, you know, get all the excess stuff off that you don't get on daily cleaning. 
So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to add some center legs to this because we need that in order for our trays to be able to slide in and out. Uh, if it's the same as our other cage, it's going to be about 46 inches. But because, you know, when I build things, not everything turns out exactly the same every time. I'm going to remeasure each piece as we go. So I think this is going to be 46. Yes, 46 inches. And we want this to go to the outside here because that's the way that the legs on the ends are and that way we'll have everything uniform. So we're gonna cut two pieces of two by two into 46 inch lengths and then we're going to attach those. I've already gone ahead and uh, ripped some two by fours into two by twos. So you guys didn't have to watch me do that. So we're just gonna get started right away on fixing this cage up. So we'll go ahead and we'll mark our center point on this top board and on the bottom board and then we'll attach our new leg here in the middle. And when working with two by twos, I like to pre-drill everything with a pilot hole so that they don't split. Two by twos do have a tendency to want to split. Now that we have those center legs attached, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a piece of two by two that runs from the front to the back. This is the back of the cage, by the way. I have it turned around right now. Uh, so it's gonna run from the front to the back. Uh, we're gonna do one on each side of these and then one on each end. That's, that will be where the trays slide in and out. I'm gonna put a mark at about five inches below the floor uh, on each of these cages, below this two by two that runs here. On the last cage I did about seven inches and I wish the trays were up a little bit higher so I'm gonna do five inches on these cages and I think this will be better. So uh, I'm gonna just mark on each side of all of these boards so I know where those cross boards go and then we'll just attach those on. All right, those are attached. The last thing that we're going to do before we start actually building the trays is we're going to put a solid back on this cage. Again, I'm doing that so that in the winter when I want to enclose half of this, I don't have to pull the cages out of the barn to work on the back. This will already be enclosed or this will already be solid and it will help protect the barn from any waste that might hit up against the barn. So let's cut a piece of plywood I'm doing this all with scrap materials that we've had around the farm, so uh, it's by no means a new piece of plywood. But let's go ahead and attach a piece of plywood to the back.
It's time to start building the trays for the cage. I've turned the cage around. So you can see this cage is just a little bit different than the other one that I, that I have. Uh, dimensions are the same, but this one, when I originally built it, I just had these two doors uh, toward the ends and never had a door in the middle. Uh, I didn't think it would be a big deal, but over time I realized it would have been really nice to have one in the middle. So I did go back and I added a door here in the middle that folds down like this. Uh, so it looks a little different, but essentially it's the same cage. I've done a little bit of measuring on these before I started filming, and the trays for this cage are going to be 45 and a half inches wide by 24 inches deep. So again, we're going to build this out of plywood and two by twos, and then we're going to cover it with that acrylic coating. It's the truck bed coating. I'll show you that. Uh, it's just something that I picked up at Walmart, but it seems to be working really well. So uh, let's go ahead and start building these. We'll try them in here, and then if they fit correctly, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, spray them and then move this out to the barn. All right, for putting these together, we're not really going to do anything uh, extraordinary. Uh, we're just going to screw these together. And then the plywood on the bottom, I'll put a lot of screws in that, and that will really hold everything together. All right, I've got both of those frames screwed together. They both fit perfectly on either side, which is good. Now we'll go ahead and we'll add the plywood to the bottom of those, and then we can get ready to paint them. All right, I've got our two trays set up here outside. Now, this is what I'm gonna be using to paint these. It's called Krylon Truck Bed Coating. Again, uh, this is just something I picked up at Walmart. I was in the paint department looking at all the different options. I thought maybe some of that like rubberized, like uh, flex seal type stuff might work. But when I saw this, and I think it's a harder, more plasticky type feel, uh, this is what I decided to get, and it worked really well on those first two that I did. Now, I'm only going to be spraying the inside of the pan and, the, and these ridges on top. I'm not spraying the bottom and everything because this stuff is about, I don't know, it's like almost $11 a can, like $10.50 a can. And it takes almost an entire can to do one tray. So uh, at that price, I'm not going to do more than I have to. So it'll be the inside of the pans that gets the most wear and tear. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this stuff. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get these painted. And then uh, they'll have to sit for about an hour, and then we'll be able to take them over.
It's been about an hour for these trays drying outside. They are dry to the touch, so that is fine for uh, moving them. We're gonna go ahead and put them back into the cage. I'm gonna go grab the tractor. We're gonna take this over to the barn. We're gonna get this cage set up next to the other. And now, I don't have any quail to put in this cage right away today. I'll be doing another big hatch soon. But typically, I fit about 35 to 40 birds in each one of these grow out cages. So, by having these in the barn instead of here in the workshop, I'll be down to having just my cages of breeders here in the workshop, which is three cages, six birds in each cage, so about 18 birds. Uh, that should be a manageable amount of dust and things, I think, here in the workshop. Uh, but I'll be getting these out, which saves me, at times, close to 100 quail that I would have in here otherwise. So uh, it's going to make a big difference. Uh, I can tell that already just by moving the ones out yesterday and, and doing some cleaning in here. It's going to do, it's going to make a big difference in the air quality here in the workshop. All right, I'm going to grab the tractor, get this moved, and I'll see you guys over in the barn. I got the new cage moved in. It fits perfectly where I want it, uh, right next to the cage that we brought out yesterday. Looks like the pans turned out perfectly. They're going to work great in here. Uh, the quail that we brought out yesterday are doing great. Uh, they had a good first day in here. Uh, you guys, it's actually so much cooler in here than it is in the workshop building. So I think the quail are going to be very happy and healthy in this environment. There's a real nice uh, natural breeze that goes through here because the two ends are fairly open, uh, but they are completely protected from the weather. Again, in the winter, uh, if I have quail out here in the winter, because these cages won't be used 100% of the time. This is for only when I'm raising up batches of them to either sell or to raise for meat. So there will be times when these cages are completely empty. But over winter, I plan on completely enclosing one half of each of these cages so that uh, the quail have a way to get out of the wind. Uh, the cold really won't affect the quail. Uh, quail can take some pretty cold temperatures before it affects them. Uh, but as long as you can keep them, you know, so they're not getting wet and they're out of the wind, they'll be just fine. So you guys, I'm excited to have this project. I hope this helps some of the breathing problems that I've been having. Um, seems like the medication's helping for now, but I don't want that to be the long-term fix. I want just a healthier environment in general. So uh, I think this is going to be a good solution to this problem, and I'm glad that you guys came along today while we fixed these cages and got them moved out here to the barn. Hey, if you're enjoying our videos and you're enjoying the type of lifestyle that we live, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. And don't forget, as always, the absolute best way that you can help our channel is just by sharing our videos on all of your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.